I don't think they talk about enough the fact that Jack Evans was trained by myself. I haven't heard it one time. I don't think it's ever been mentioned. I don't, I don't think one. Only on Impact. Ever tell you the Stryker story? Which no. One? Well, we went to Starcast or whatever a few years ago, and uh, and poor Stryker was there. In the Virgil table? Matt Stryker just walks up and he goes, I'm Matt Stryker. I know y'all hate me. <laughs> and he walked away. <laughs> I was like, I don't hate you personally. I think you're a horrible commentator. But you know what? I mean, I'd be a horrible uh, motorcycle rider. It doesn't mean I'm a bad guy. And he's really upset. This orange Cassidy lookalike has been staring at me all night. And they cut to a man who is wearing a <laughs> denim jacket and sunglasses. <laughs> and that's same, where the likeness stops. They wrote the same thing on the front page, a lookalike. I was like, I've never seen less of a lookalike. You're like every other woman I've met. You're entitled, you're self-centered, and you're banging some dude in the back. And the crowd gasps. Taz is appalled. There's nothing wrong with being in love, he says. I want this car destroyed. Like, God bless Fuego and everything like that, but... This dummy. I'm assuming right now we've all seen the, the clips from the Street Fighter video game of like, uh, uh, yes, Zangief yes. destroying the car with his bare hands. Let Miro do this. I'm watching this match and I, and the first thing that popped into my mind was, I'm watching a Shii versus a Shii. A lot. And then I paused yeah. and I thought, or am I watching Takagi versus Takagi? <laughs> it's hard to tell. And then I realized I'm watching a Shii versus Takagi. Yes. Holy shit. And man, they fucking beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> This match was a beauty. The idea that, like, you know, well, that stuff was accepted back then. It wouldn't be accepted today. It's like, hold on a second. It's not that it was accepted back then. It was just that it happened. I'm like, no one accepted that shit. I mean, you think Michael Hayes liked that his fucking ponytail got cut off? Dude, I remember in the 90s, I did not let anyone near my fucking stuff. I would leave all of my gear or all of my stuff that I brought to the building with Tammy Magnet. I wouldn't leave anything in that fucking locker room. I didn't yep. trust these fuckers. I didn't like a lot of them. I thought they were shitheads back then. It wasn't like, oh, how funny. Uh, let's do some uh, some goofy rib. It was like, a bunch of assholes. That's what it was. Rebel put Shelly Martinez <laughs> in... Something like the banana splits. Oh, yeah, my vag. Which is supposed to stretch your groin muscles. Your, your muscles and tendons are being yes. stretched. And that will hurt you regardless of gender. And mm -hmm. Shelly Martinez, whatever was going through her mind, <laughs> decided the best the way to sell this is to scream, my vag, my vag. And then when the ref asks, are you okay? Respond, no, my vag hurts. What is your favorite Halloween costume for everyone? I used to always be a cat and have a, have a real tail. Right, what do you tail. What do you mean a real tail? What do you mean you had a real tail? You cut a tail off a cat? No. <laughs> That's from Montana. Stranger things have happened. No, like I stuffed the cat cat's tail and stuck well, it on Well, that me. wouldn't be a real tail then. I used to be a bit of a comic book nerd. So we went to see uh, Frank Miller's Sin City. With my wife and Ooh. daughter. Ooh. What in God's name? Were you? Even I know that's a stupid idea. Well, was it the sex or violence that turned them off? So when I was young, uh, I, I top teeth. I had a large gap to the point that uh, some kid called me Gappy because of the giant gap in my teeth. Now we just call you Yappy. WrestleMania 3, April 2nd, 1986, or March 21st, 1985. Okay, well, okay. Both of those are both wrong. Both of those are wrong, Granny. Hogan in serious trouble. Andre gives Hogan some bad punches, even walk over his body when down. Hogan comes back for a few minutes. Uh, elbow punches, bangs Andre's face on the turnbuckle. <laughs> Didn't last long again. Hogan versus Flair. I sure don't like that Flair. Hmm. Hogan not a lot of comes do in. Right now. It's a good week to not like that guy, Granny. You know, I still have one guy, but I can't even remember his name anymore. That I never paid him for uh, a one contest because he never got in touch with me. I, I believe that's Vincent Verhey of North Bend, Washington. <laughs> oh, get out of here, Vinny! You cheapskate. <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> trying to steal money from a ninety-one-year-old woman. No, oh, ten, horrible ten, man. Ten, technically, I'm trying to steal money from a contest winner. Well, I if see. you want. If you want, Vinny, I'll send you $10. I will accept that $10. God. <laughs> Don't send him $10. He's right. Send me 20 
We get the ECW theme song. Which right away, I mean, it's hard to make the show a thumbs down now because it has the ECW theme song on it. The greatest wrestling song of all time. It reminded me so much of AEW. Because what it was, was a promotion that is for the fans. It is a promotion where the promotion is the baby face. That's true. If you watch WWE, the promotion is the heel. Uh, they have the, uh, you know, the GMs, the evil GMs. Vince is always fucking with the wrestlers and storylines. Stephanie's always fucking with the wrestlers and story. There's always heel GMs. Blah, 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 blah. Whereas AEW, it's a babyface promotion. They always give you what you want. They tease something and they deliver it. And it was the exact same way with ECW. Hot Vaguely, stuff is a was, spray, okay? Yeah. And you spray it on your body, and all your blood vessels dilate. Yes. So you basically, okay. like, turn a shade of red. Yes, okay. So you get a tan, and then you put the hot stuff on, and then you look even darker. So I think someone was spraying hot stuff or something, and it sprays right into Lance's mouth. And so then Lance gets an allergic reaction. <laughs> so the next thing you know, he's on fucking oxygen. And then after that, he's got to carry an EpiPen everywhere. So that is the story of Landstorm in this match. Wow. With this Grand Slam show here, 1.273 million viewers on TNT. After beating Raw in the 18-49 to 49 demo the past two weeks, Dynamite's .48 fell just short of the .49 that Raw drew this Monday, which led to a lot of... Uh, it's quite hilarious, actually. The WWE fans that are now letting off fireworks because they won 0.49 to 0.48. It's like, my God, that's the reason for celebration now? It's the Arthur Ashe Tennis Stadium in Queens, New York. It is an awesome venue. Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson. What is the greatest match in the history of free TV wrestling? It's probably this one. It was very, very strong cases, this one. This was eye-opening to a lot of people, not just me. I had people emailing me about it going, man, you know, I never really watched AEW and I'm a diehard WWE fan, but this match was really an eye-opener in terms of watching what Brian Danielson was able to do with no restrictions compared to what he did the entire time that he was in WWE and Kenny Omega's out of this world and you just put him in there. They've never wrestled each other. Live, 30 minutes, and my God, did they tear it up in this match. Just a thing of absolute beauty. I can't say enough good things about it. For God's sake, if for whatever reason, if you have not watched it yet, I'm sure it's on, on demand on your cable system right now. Go load it up, watch Dynamite. CM Punk comes out for a promo. He is absolutely beloved by 20,000 people in New York. He tries so hard to put the opening match over, and the crowd, which loved that match, just won't let him. They want to cheer for him. The fuck you mom spot on Twitter. That's always a classic. That, I think, is a first. It may be, yes. I, I don't recall any heel saying fuck you to their own mother before. Yeah. His actual mom. He told to fuck off. He's doing all of his stuff. He's moving. He's not. He doesn't get blown up. He no. looks good. He's got the paint on, so you can't even tell he's old. I just thought Sting was great in this match. We load up Quinn McKay at the announced desk to say today's episode is all about the pure division. Dandy. That's just Dude, dandy. I like the pure division, Vinny. If you actually have been watching a lot of Ring of Honor, the pure division is is good way more often than it's bad. Call your friends if you want. There was a rope break on TV. You don't want to miss this action. So then they're going off about how he's out of rope breaks. a bitter fan. I had to watch a whole hour of... Pure rules. I don't like pure rules, Brian. It's not what I'm into. It, the idea of it should work. Just say, if you grab the ropes, you're still pinned, and you can't punch people. But instead, it's, you get a certain number of rope breaks, and you get one punch. Well, yes. 